Ladies and gentlemen, I've just given you a speech about Egypt. Um, I spoke about the revolution which recently took place, the toppling of President Mubarak, and I also spoke a little about the last 150 years of this country's history and aspects like the Suez Canal and other important issues in um, the recent decades of Egypt's history. I'd like to continue speaking about Egypt now, but this time I'd like to look at it from a different perspective. I'd like to look at Egyptian history from the perspective of Coptic Christians. And I'd like to speak to you about a few recent episodes um, of violence which Coptic Christians have suffered. And I'd like to speak to you about the way Coptic Christians have lived in Egypt over the years. In Egypt, the majority of the population now is made up by Sunni Muslims. This means that life can often be difficult for Christians who live in the country. This is also the case with many other countries in the Middle East, as you may well be aware. The Christian minorities suffer at the hands of the Muslim majority. So Coptic Christians are now a minority in Egypt today, but this has not always been the case. Over m many centuries, Coptic Christians have played an important role in Egyptian history. They have been dominant in the economy, in social issues, and in politics in centuries gone by. As a matter of fact, the word Coptic originally means Egyptian. So we can see that um, Coptic Christians have been important in Egypt's past. However, if we look at recent events, we can find episodes of Copts suffering repression at the hands of their fellow countrymen and women. Allow me to give you one particular example of this. I'd like to speak about the clashes that took place in Cairo on the 9th of October 2011. On this day, according to official sources, 24 Coptic Christians were killed as a result of clashes which took place between Christians and Muslims in Cairo. The Copts themselves, however, claim, claim that, the deaths, that the death toll was much higher. They say that at least 50 people were killed. The day after these clashes, there were further confrontations between the police and Christians. These uh, clashes took place near the hospital where the dead had been taken to. So this is one particularly um, worrying episode of violence in Egypt. However, this violence is not restricted to this isolated event. Despite Christians and Muslims living in peace for many centuries in the Middle East and in Egypt in particular, there has been a significant violence between Copts and Muslims in Egypt since the 1970s. I can just give you another example by speaking about the events of May 2011. On one particular day during this month, 15 Copts were killed and 55 were injured in clashes. These examples of tension and these episodes of violence mean that there are significant doubts over whether a true transition can take place in Egypt. People wonder whether, we, whether they can move on from Mubarak's regime of repression to a truly functioning democracy. Any future government in Egypt or any government now w should need to should feel the need to find a solution for the clashes, for the tension between Christians and Muslims. Uh, any government should ensure that Christians and Muslims are able to live together in peace. Politicians say that the solution to this thorny issue is to uh, strengthen laws which will allow for religious equality and they claim that these laws can indeed enforce religious equality. 
But if we speak to the cops themselves, what do they say? Well, I spoke to one 32-year-old engineer from Cairo, who lives in Cairo now, and I asked him about what his view was on the tension that Egypt has seen recently. And he told me that, in his view, this is all the government's fault. For many years, the government has discriminated against Coptic Christians. I also spoke to another young Coptic Christian um, who told me that actually, instead of being instead of the government being to blame, it is actually the church. The Coptic Church does not protest against the attacks that it suffers. It does not campaign against um, the onslaught of criticism that it receives and the violence that its members have to suffer. Many Copts also speak about the time under Mubarak. They point to this period as a key factor in the current violence. They say that the government of Mubarak actually favoured attacks against Coptic Christians. This was so that instability would increase in Egypt. But why would Mubarak have wanted to foment instability in his own country? Well, they, the Copts say that this was because of the fact that uh, through greater instability, the international community would have to accept the excuses that Mubarak put forward in um, supporting his extreme measures to rule the country. For example, uh, Mubarak declared a state of emergency which lasted 30 years. This was um, an excellent tool, according to many, for Mubarak to um, rule as he wished. The government said that, of course, a state of emergency was necessary in order to prevent Islamists taking control, but many see it simply as a means of the government ensuring that it is able to exert more power over the people. So it's clear that Coptic Christians have suffered a great deal. They've suffered um, violence, um, and this violence has uh, continued unabated over recent years. But if we look at the history of the Coptic Christians in Egypt, do we see the same situation? Do we see continued violence over centuries? Well, as I was saying earlier, the Coptic Christians, of course, arrived in Egypt before the Muslims. They arrived in the centuries following Christ's death. The first Muslims arrived much later on, however, in around the year 639 AD. They, they arrived with the Arab invasion of the Middle East. Slowly, over the years, the Muslims became more and more dominant in Egypt. But it was not until the 12th century that Muslims had full control over the region. Despite having control, the Muslims and the Muslims lived in peace with the Christians. So we can see that over the last 13 centuries, actually, Christians and Muslims have lived alongside one another, largely in peace. However, in the first half of, of the 20th century, tensions began to um, boil over. At this time, the Christian population was roughly 25% of the total Egyptian population. Christians lived largely comfortable lives. Um, they, many, most of them were quite well off. Egypt at the time was ruled by a monarchy which was dependent on the British colonialists. This was at the time of the British Protectorate of Egypt, of course. During this period, the wealthy became wealthier, and unfortunately the poor became poorer. This led to severe inequality in Egypt. This inequality caused severe tensions in the country, and these came to a head on the 10th of June 1952. On this day, 
a crowd of poor people set fire to hotels and theatres in cities across Egypt. These buildings were seen to be related to the Western dominance over Egypt. And the poor people, of course, wanted to bring about change in this situation. So this day, the 10th of June 1952, marked a watershed in the history of Christians in Egypt. From this point onwards, life became harder for Christians. They were very much seen to be linked to the colonialist British. And the uh, Christians were disliked in Egypt because of the memories that Muslims had of the Crusades. After this period, Gamal Abdel Nasser came to power as president of Egypt. He had a socialist vision for the country. He wanted to redistribute wealth, and this, for the Copts, for the Copts meant that um, Christians would lose out. Many of them lost their high standing positions in society, or they saw that their wealth diminished. Nasser's successor was then even less favourable to Christians. This meant that discontent increased among the Christian population. Egyptians, Egyptian Copts consider themselves the true Egyptians because, as I said, the Muslims were seen as the invaders of Egypt since they arrived later on. For many centuries, many Coptic Christians emigrated from Egypt. This led to uh, the population of Christians dwindling. And uh, this was further exacerbated by the fact that birth rates among Christians have always been lower than among Muslims. This means that nowadays Coptic Christians represent only 8% of the total Egyptian population. Over this same period, over recent decades, we've seen that Islamists have also grown in influence. This is because many um, Islamist groups reject the so-called new modernization of Egypt, and instead they prefer to turn towards Islamic fundamentalism as a solution. One group in particular that follows this approach are the Salafists. The Salafists gain support because of the fact that many people in, in Egypt rejected the cosy relationship that existed between President Mubarak on the one hand and the United States and Israel on the other. The Salafists saw the presence of Christians on Egyptian soil as um, blasphemous and as insulting to their religion. And as I said, the Salafists have increased their influence within Egypt. And this, of course, does not bode well for the future of Christians in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, we have all learnt a lot about Egyptian history, whether it be at school or um, by reading the newspapers or through other means. But for many of us, this knowledge is restricted to ancient Egypt or to other aspects of Egypt's history. I hope that today, by speaking about the Coptic Christians, I have managed to broaden your perspective and to tell you more about a group which is maybe less well-known in Egypt. Thank you. <laughs>